All right, here we go again. The Ricky Gervais Show, Season 3, Episode 5. Carl's Day. Lego. Carl, what doesn't annoy you? That's the question, really. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and... Uh, different things annoy me. But I don't just go about getting annoyed. Seems Stuff like happens. It. No, no, no. Stuff happens. What's annoyed it? you this week? Um, I mean, I tend to get annoyed when people around me get annoyed. I'm never the one who's going in somewhere getting annoyed. I'm quite happy go lucky me. <laughs> You're having a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably... uh, there is it... nothing about... No one would ever no, say that. No one... I would just describe Carl Pilkington. Oh, he's happy go lucky. <laughs> Whenever I see him, he's skipping along, whistling a tune. <laughs> I whistle a lot, I've told you. I'm yeah, only to annoy people when you're playing Scrabble. No, I, I, I just... At the end of the day, I think the problem is, most of the day, I'm on my own. Right. Right? I'm doing DIY at mm. home. I'm quite happy. Mm. No one's there annoying me. Right. I go for my lunch later than everyone else, so I don't have to see people. He's like Quasimodo. <laughs> isn't he? It's like Why? coming down when everyone else is... Not yeah. there. Yeah, no one's around. Uh, yeah. Suzanne! <laughs> <laughs> no, but then that's the problem. Suzanne then comes home. She's been sort of with people, so she comes in with loads of energy, and I'm going, just slow down. Stop going on, then she's breaking stuff, and that's probably the last what thing. She's, she's breaking stuff. She's heavy handed, heavy handed with all the stuff I've been fixing. She broke the shutters. What else did she break? Well, you could have done a good job. I did do a good the job. Shutters? Where do you live? In the old west? <laughs> What's between the shutters? Some shutters on a window. She, she, every, I every like it dark. <laughs> I don't want them to see me. What a mum. So what else has she broke? <laughs> She's always breaking stuff. The light switch outside. Heavy handed. Don't. And she forces things. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It doesn't matter how hard you hit it or how hard you pull. Just tell me if it doesn't work and I'll sort it. That's what I do these days. I'm like a caretaker to Suzanne's house. I'm wandering around and replacing stuff that she's fucked up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh dear. So, uh, so she annoys you. She comes oh. home. You've had a lovely day of peace on your own. So the only person that likes you and talks to you annoys you. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. And uh, when you're at home doing your DIY, I want to picture that scene. Well, well, okay, right. We've never done this before, right? But let's do a typical day. We've known each other now. What? How long have we known Carl? Nearly ten years. Feels like a long time. Right? Yeah. So. Let's do a typical day in the life of Carl Pilkington. So, for my first question is, what time does Suzanne have to wake up? Does that annoy you? Does she have to get up earlier than you? Cos she's got a proper job. The mm. alarm goes off. Mm. Uh, what what time? time? About seven. That seems early. Uh, yeah, but I'm used to it now. OK. Uh, now, moment. you spring out of bed, make her a cup of tea, do you? No. <laughs> right. I let her get up, mess about. Um, By mess about, you mean get ready for work. <laughs> yeah. Right. She's not being quiet, so I, I'm then, I'm awake now. Right? Mm -hmm. What do you mean she's not being quiet? Well, she's just banging about, like I say, heavy-handed. Every, I don't know how she does it. It's just doors and stuff. Everything seems like... The Hulk's in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Bounding about. Just don't, don't be heavy-handed with it. When, even, like, pulling the curtains shut and stuff. Because it's not her who has to fix it. Do you know what I mean? When yeah. she's yanking at them and pulling them open, it's like, just, just pull them like that. I've put them on a nice rail. Just pull them slowly like that. Right. It's things like that. This sounds like these jobs aren't done correctly. That's what they're not done proper. No, because if you get a, like a, you know, if you get a bad pair of jeans and someone says, oh, you've ripped it, a good pair of jeans, they won't rip, boy. No, just look after it. It doesn't matter if you've got good jeans or poor jeans. Treat them the same. Mm. Look after your stuff. Mm. I've always been like that. I know. I've yeah. told you from a young age. I didn't like people sitting on my bed after I'd made it. It was yeah. like I've gone to the trouble. I've made it. There's no creases in it. Don't sit on it. There's a chair there. Use the chair. Sure. Okay. Um, That's mental. But yeah, <laughs> it's not mental. It's, like, it's the behaviour of a. It's not there. mental. Yeah. So Suzanne, so she's so passionate about the place. So the, the doors. I mean, what's up with the doors? Do they squeak or is the no. catch been done wrongly on no. them or um? No, no. Is it, it the wrong no. wood or something? Someone's no, just heavy-handed. No. Right. Okay. So yeah. then she has a shower. Uh, if I have a shower, I like to go second because I've I'm, I've got the Mr Muscle spray that she doesn't do properly. Right. Do you breakfast together? Just sit sit on the bed. Have some. Uh... Oh, I haven't even made the bed yet. 
Yeah, yeah, it's made. Well, don't sit on the bed if it's made. It's no, mad I've sit on the down. chair. I've calmed down. That's what I've said to her. As I'm getting older, yeah, I'm easing a bit. Yeah, you're like Doris Day. So um, sit on the bed, look at the window. Why are you having breakfast not sat on the bed? That yeah, makes sense to me. Sense Either to me. have breakfast in bed, just classic, or have it at the kitchen table. The radio's in there, and it's just kind of. So you get up, make breakfast, and go back and sit on the bed because the radio's What's in there. What's going on with the crumbs, Rick? I don't know what the crumbs are doing, the but I don't know why they've got two radios. Hang on, you don't know what I'm having. I'm having cornflakes. No crumbs with cornflakes. No. So you have two of you are sat there. Are you sat on opposite sides of the bed looking at each other, or you're both sat on the sides oh, of the bed looking at the wall, listening to the radio, eating a bowl of cornflakes? Yeah. Well, you, are you sort of cross legged on the bed, or your legs are down on the Just floor? Just down on the floor. Yeah. Right. Fully clothed now, you've had the showers. Uh, I might have a t shirt on and my undies. Okay. I haven't put my socks on yet, I don't like socks. I'd put them on last. Why don't you like socks? They just cut off your freedom. <laughs> I don't know how socks can cut off anything. It's all right if your feet are cold, they're nice to put on, but I don't know, I, my socks are never that well-fitting, so I don't really enjoy but wearing them. But won't you get socks that fit you? Yeah, because I never buy socks, do they I? They should be the same people. size as your shoes. Yeah, yeah a little I, I let other people buy them for me and they're never quite right. But, hold on, though, this is a rule you've imposed on yourself. <laughs> I'm only telling you because you've asked. I wasn't. I didn't come in here moaning about it. Socks saying, cut off your freedom. Never right. heard that before. Okay. I mean, Mandela said it. <laughs> well, yeah. Never heard socks compared to the Berlin Wall. Yeah, I think I think William Wallace said it as well. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Imagine that in Braveheart. Just takes his socks off and goes, yeah. freedom. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I... then I'll say, right, on your way to work, take the bin bag out. Right. She'll do that, and then I get on with whatever I've got to do that day. A little kiss on the cheek on the forehead. But why do you say pat on the head? <laughs> pat two on the head. I'll just sort of rub the back of the head. There you go. I'll see you later. Th then what? You're there. You got your pants on. You got your t-shirt on. Well, you're you ready to call the news. Flags. You listen to what's being said on the radio. We'll have a little discussion about it. Sometimes she's in the mood for it. Sometimes she'll go. Don't worry about it. Right. What well, now? What? What? To what would she say that to then? What would you worry about if you heard on the news? I heard something about worms getting teeth. <laughs> <laughs> right. And she was kind of going, you know, you're not meant to worry about this new story. This war's going on stuff, you never listen to them. Do you remember the story of the worms with the teeth? Should we be alarmed ourselves? What was the information? It was just saying how um, it was all about nature versus nurture thing. Right. And saying how worms that are growing up in a family where there's loads of food around. What do you mean growing up in a family? Just a family of worms in the soil. Right. They're going through the soil. If there's loads of food mm. for everyone, and they don't have to fight for food. Right. They're quite happy, they don't have teeth. The ones, like the rough of worms, <laughs> where there's not enough, it's like a massive family, the kids left, right, and centre. But they haven't got the nutrients to feed them all. Mm. They fight against each other, and the ones, they're, they're growing teeth now. I, I didn't hear the new story, so I I'm going out on a limb here. I don't think it was about a worm being maybe more working class and chavvy, though. <laughs> about big families. Look at that. Big family can't even feed them all. And then you've got middle class worms going, well, we've got enough food for everyone because we haven't uh, overbred. You know what people are like now? They've got researchers watching all sorts of stuff. Right. Keeping their eye on everything. When you don't have to worry about it. A worm with teeth, if they've got teeth or not, to me it is not a problem. Not a problem at all. I normally save a worm if I see one. So, oh, in, a, in the rain, on a pavement. If I see it there, I go, someone's going to stand on that, and I yeah. chuck it, and I sort of watch it for a bit, see which way it was going, give it an helping hand. <laughs> see which way it was going, <laughs> like it had an aim. Well, see they which... No, they, they do, though, don't they? They're always going somewhere. Yeah, he was going to the dentist. You can't tell, you don't know which end its head's on. OK, so it's five past eight, Suzanne's gone out, you've rubbed the back of her head, she's took the rubbish <laughs> out. You're there, pants, T-shirt. No socks. No socks yet. What happens to the bowls of um, X cornflakes? Where do they go? Have you got? A... I wash up. You wash up. That's the f next thing you do, is it? Mm. Right. Okay. Now yeah. then, do you plan ahead for the day? Do you think to yourself, Carl, make a list of stuff to do, or do you just let it go? I you let just... it. I let it happen. Just I don't like uh, the 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 worst thing for me mm. is planning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've I'm told I'm you before. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, don't I'm get anything done by planning. Is what I don't. You said. I don't yeah. like the idea of waking up going, I've got to do that today, because that's when you you don't look forward to doing the thing. Yep. Mm. Whereas I get up, I'm washing up. I'll look at a wall and I'll go, those tiles aren't very good. I'm going to rip them off. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is amazing. This is amazing. I mean, forget Idiot Abroad. Forget the Ricky Gervais show. Let's just have 24-7 Carl Cam. Just I mean, think how that would look. He gets up, he's, he's 
Suzanne leaves, we get him to, you know, uh, he looks at a wall. He we starts go... tearing the <laughs> tiles off. It looks like the behaviour of a psychopath, doesn't it? <laughs> oh. So this is what worries me, though. The fact that you're always doing DIY suggests that you didn't do a good job in the first place. No, Steve, am I'm I wrong? Never, I, am, exactly I never, right ever do the same thing twice. No, Once it's done, it's done. Mm. I do it right. I take my time. I'd get it done So right. this is other people's workmanship that you're undoing Definitely. and doing properly? OK, right. Now, the radio's in the bedroom, so you can oh. listen to the radio when you're doing your work. I normally drag it through. You drag it through? How big is it? No, it's just a little clock radio thing. So it's plugged in, it's... Yeah, yeah. yeah. OK. Then, uh... Mm -hmm. So if it wasn't for um, meeting up with me and Steve and Suzanne being home between, I don't know, <laughs> 6 o'clock at night and 8 the next morning, you wouldn't talk to anyone, would you? No. Do you have any friends that you might talk to? Yeah, talk to some people on the phone. But then I soon get bored with that. Right. About five minutes in, I realise I'm not listening anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so what were you talking about that you got bored about? Oh, I can't remember, cos I got bored with yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he was talking, and I kind of thought, I hope he doesn't say what do you think of that in a minute, cos I wasn't listening. Right. So what's the point of having the conversation? I don't know. But hold on, I call you up. It's the, presumably the first phone call you get. It's the first Sometimes. phone call I make. Sometimes. I call you up and I go, what's going on, boy? Yeah. Right? Yeah, but most of the time I don't tell you because you'll go, right, what are you doing doing DIY? Pay someone to do it. And we have to have all that every day. The same <laughs> chat. <laughs> if I'm not doing DIY, I wouldn't be doing anything. And then I get grumpy. Suzanne comes home, she goes, what have you done today? And I go, nothing. And I get fed up then because I don't because feel like I've I'm done, worth anything. Because I work harder for your career than you do. <laughs> I'm always doing stuff to try and get you to do stuff. I'm always trying to get you shows and things, and I'm always trying to get you to get out there and do something towards it. I don't want to do it. I've done it now. Yeah, I've done it. Yeah, we did the program. It goes out on the telly. Job done. Mm. If people want to watch it, they watch it. There's no point me cropping up on Loose Women, asking people to tune into my programme. They either want to watch it or they don't. If they're watching Loose Women, I don't want them watching my programme. <laughs> There's a lot of crap on the telly, and that's why, in a way, people go, oh, it's amazing isn't it, that you're on the telly. No, not really, because there's loads of garbage on there. Anyone can get on it. Yeah, well, that's it's true. It's not special anymore. That's it used true. to be special in the 80s when there was, like, three channels, four channels. Now it's a doddle. But that's why you should make special TV. You should relish that. No, because they want some... some sort of flumph telly, don't they? That's, <laughs> that they don't have to, they don't have to think about. Yeah, do, you like... mean, do you mean the programme The Flumps? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say flump, he said flump. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> now, this is... Now, are you spelling flump? It's F-L-U-M-F. P-H, flump. P-H, flump. P-F. P-F? <laughs> Oh, PF. flump, OK. Pl flump telly. Yeah, flump. Flump telly. So, <laughs> so, 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 so <laughs> and what would be an example of flump telly? What's flump no, telly? No, I don't want to go slagging stuff off, but no. I'm just saying I watch less would and less telly now. flump telly? Who would be a typical who's, who's typical? Is it those... Is it all for those awful... Um, docu soaps where people live their life like an open wound, saying, "Look, me fanny fell off." And then I haven't that. seen that. But yeah, <laughs> all, that, all that sort of stuff. I do honestly. The amount of telly I watch now compared to a few years ago, it's non-existent. Suzanne comes home at night. I might watch a Grand Designs to mm. get some tips off it. Mm. Other than that, so that's work. You count that as work, don't you? Research. Yeah, at, least, yeah. it's, at least you learn something. So then we'll just sit and have a game of crib. Or... <laughs> <laughs> You'd have been happy in the Blitz, wouldn't you? You'd have been happy down in one of those subway stations. Oh, Suzanne, what? What? Chimney scarf? <laughs> oh, no, what was that? Doodle bug. <laughs> i better go up there. Oh, leave it. Well, it's fine. <laughs> oh, that's bloody heavy-handed, them Germans. They're bloody <laughs> heavy-handed. Well, let's go back a bit here. So you, you've done a bit of tiling. Good job. Please, job. you're halfway through. Spot a lunch around three-ish. Yeah. What do you do? Do you pop out for lunch? In a uh, depends. Sometimes Suzanne, as I pat her on the edge, she sometimes says, there's some ham in the fridge. And I'll go, all right. Um, <laughs> I love it. Like, it's a little choreograph. If I, oh, I better pat her on the head. I don't know what's going <laughs> yeah, to eat today. Yeah. Oh, uh, Carl thinks, like uh, Pavlovian conditioning. Yeah. Last time I patted her on the head, she told me about some food in the fridge. <laughs> Bye, love. Take the rubbish out. I'm in the fridge. Cheers. Oh. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, OK. So, I'll eat that. Um, now, just just I, the radio's on the whole time. Is there because I want to I want to picture this. You're not working in silence. Radio's on the whole time. 
their little squeaky radio that's sort of halfway in the doorway of the bedroom and the lounge or whatever. You've got the radio. And what station are you listen to? You listen to music? You listen Sometimes to I listen to sort of speech stuff. Right. Sometimes I listen to music. What would be speech? Like a kind of one of those phone in programmes? Uh, phone ins do me head in a bit. Right. I like, uh, you know, reports on stuff. Uh, so you like to be informed as you go? Um, yeah, just so it gives me something to talk about. Because if you're not with anyone all day, mm. your brain's not doing anything, is it? Mm, mm. Whereas me listening to them, it's like having someone in the room telling you stuff without you having to chat back. I Perfect. prefer that. I'm a big, I'm a bigger listener than I'm a, a talker. Yeah. Whereas Perfect. these days, a lot of people are talking, but they're not listening. Mm. Perfect. So. Although you're not listening to actual humans like your friends when they call no, you up. Because they're just <laughs> mithering. Um, do you make sure that you get everything done and dusted before Suzanne comes home, so she comes into a spotless place? Yeah. And you, so she comes in, do you instantly show her the work you've done or do you just let her notice it for Sometimes herself? Sometimes I just leave it and see how long it takes for her to go. Oh, you've done that. OK. Uh, and uh, if she doesn't notice it, are you annoyed or are you excited to tell her? Sometimes I forget. <laughs> <laughs> he does it again the next what? day. <laughs> That's why he looks a bit shoddy. <laughs> I should do that. Wow, sometimes you forget. Um, oh. And so is it, it's not the equivalent of when a lady comes to him and says, uh, oh, you've noticed me, air, me new hairdo. Is it sort of the equivalent for you? If she hasn't noticed, you don't get frustrated. Now, you do mm. notice her new hairdos, don't you? Because you say you don't like them. So what does she say about your tiling? Uh, no, most of the stuff I do, she goes, that's good. But sometimes she'll go, why don't we just get someone in to do it? What, before or after? Well, it depends what it is. If it's something that, that's big and has been bothering her, but it's not bothering me, mm. I'm saying I'll sort it out. Well, what's an example of something that's big that bothers her and not you? Right. Don't worry about it. Okay. She's going to get someone in. Well, no, I won't get someone in. Because, you see, the thing is she got someone in once mm. when the oven blew up. <laughs> Right? I said, right. leave it, I'll sort it, I'll look at it. No, you don't know what you're doing. Get someone in. No, let me have a look. No, get someone in. She calls someone up, they come round. The old £80 call-out charge business, straight mm. away. Mm. They pull it out, they go, oh, it was the fuse and the plug. Now, I could have sorted that out, but she didn't give me a chance. So now it's good now, because I've got that on the old back burner. So every time she says, let's call someone out, I'll go, oven. <laughs> a little reminder. <laughs> so I'm glad in the way that she did. But so now she just leaves it. She doesn't interfere. Now, Carl, do you... Carl, Carl, I've got terrible pains. Oven. <laughs> <laughs> I normally speak to my mum and dad at some point every day. Really? Do you? Every day you speak to your mum and dad? Yeah. Could you take us through a typical conversation with your dad? He calls up. Um, what does he say? What does he say? He said, oh, I've just been out, got your mum some medicine. Well, every time he calls, he's no, been I'm out. I'm just telling getting... you the last call. Out. Oh, I see. Sorry. Right. Um, what's the weather like? And then my mum might get on. And, um, okay. Let's, okay. What's, what's she got to say? Look forward to this. She just tells me a bit of it. She, like, what was it the other day? She said, "Oh, have you seen them tablets? Not food." <laughs> <laughs> She's so like you. She's just like you. Oh God, what is she a fucking astronaut? <laughs> Have you seen them tablets? What a food! Oh, <laughs> oh God! What other tablets like food? Uh, no, that's what it is. It's like the spaceman food. They've come out and we're just chatting about them. She's saying, "Oh." What do you mean they've know. come out? Really? Yeah, 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 because we live in a busy world and everything, where mm. people haven't got time to have a proper lunch. So you have a call like this, scintillating phone conversation like this every day with your parents. Yeah. And does she always try to find a piece of it, new information she thinks might interest you? That's sweet, day? though. That's sweet yeah, that you absolutely. talk to his parents every day. So you've spoken to your mum and dad, you've changed the tiles. Suzanne comes in. The kitchen's all clean, ready for her to make the tea. Ready okay. for her to make the tea, even though you've been... I know you've been tiling, but that was a sort of... That was a job you gave yourself. You didn't have to do it. Mm. No, but I don't do cooking. She knows that. This this isn't even a discussion. Right. She knows... What are you having tonight? Uh, scampi. So she'll do all that. I'll eat it. And, sorry, don't we just rewind for a second? <laughs> I'll so... eat it. He's listening in his day's work. I'll eat it. Uh, I say, I've eaten that. She goes, thank you. They go, oven. <laughs> OK, let's act it out, yep. OK? You've just cleaned up, right? The last bit there, you look back, them tiles look good. You look at the clock. Right, uh, vacuuming up, cleaning up all the mess. Mm. Uh, oh, phone's going. Who's that? Suzanne. All right. Yeah, coming home. All right then. See you in a bit. She'll go. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put the kettle on, or at least fill it. Ready. 
Because mm. she normally calls again. And, what do you mean? Uh, she calls again? What? She calls again when she's out the tube. Let's do it, let's hear it. What's going on? All right. You're out the tube. Yeah, do you want a cup of tea? Yeah. All right, see you in a minute. Sometimes I'll say I'll get us a little treat when you come out the tube. Yeah. Um, so she'll get me, you know, a bounty or something to go with a cup of tea. Do you specify that when you say get me a treat? She says, well, well what? Sometimes you have a Mars bar, sometimes you have a No, that's, that's enough for me. I'll go, I'll, when, when she comes in, it's a talking topic, isn't it? What have you got me? Topic? <laughs> <laughs> it's usually it's something that gives you a topic. You know, it's, it's, it's something to chat about, isn't it? Right, OK. okay. So, bounty. <laughs> so uh, has there ever been a time... Sorry, I've just got to get this straight, Steve. Sorry, Rick, I just wanted to say, could, could you imagine you and I having a conversation about what chocolate bar you ever brought me? What did you get me, Rick? I've uh, got your bounty, is that Thanks, right? mate. <laughs> That's as long as that conversation can possibly yeah, go. You're talking it. about it, it's a talking point. Yeah, so what happens? So what, what's the last time there was a discussion about what she bought you? Did she ever bring you a bounty and you go, oh, I was really hoping for a Mars bar? Um. I think the last time she got a bounty, I sort of said, oh, they do a three-pack now. You know how they just have two bars? They do a three-one. Right, what did she say? She said, did they? Did they she said, I want out of this relationship. <laughs> no, but that's how she comes through. Take a coat off, I'll go, oh. She'll go, what, are we having scampi still or have you gone off the idea? And then I'll go, oh, you know, we should get them tablets my mum's been talking about. She goes, what tablets? I go, the food. So see how it's all coming together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like that, and that's... that's what does she is. say to the idea of now living on tablets instead of um, having some scampi and chips when she comes home after a hard day's work? What does she, she say to that? She just sort of goes, all oh, right. Mm. <laughs> she says, all oh, right. Yeah. So, so this important information which you're imparting that you've gotten during the day, her response <laughs> to that is, all oh, right. Yeah. So, and then I'll just... I'll get her attention at some point. I'll say there's worms with teeth. <laughs> I'm going to bring out the good big guns now. I imagine. Right. All right, she's ignoring me. OK, wait for this. <laughs> Suzanne, I see you, you're ignoring me. Yeah. Worms with teeth. Oh, God. Amazing. Oh, God. So what does she say to worms have teeth? Uh, I can't remember. She just Did... sort of said, oh, have you got the facts right? I said, yeah. That's, that's kind of it. And she'll either go, all right, or she'll... Uh... I mean, it's pretty rare that like, it's anything more than that. <laughs> so it's not a conversation, really. It's, no, because the response twice now has been, oh, right. <laughs> what happens next? Take us through. I'll sort of say, you got anything to report? Anything gone on today? Mm -hmm. And she knows it's, it's a sort of phase off again. It's like a phone call. She'll go, oh, so-and-so's leaving or whatever, and I don't know these people. Mm. And I'm not that interested. Mm. And she senses that. Yeah. Yep. Um, so she'll go, oh, have you paid the insurance? I'm going, oh, I forgot. And she'll go, I told you to do that. And she'll yeah, but I've been doing the tiling. She's going, yeah, but you weren't meant to do the tiling. I should sort the insurance out on the washer, because the washer keeps breaking. Um, and she won't let me fix it, even though I know what it was. It was a heating element. I said, I know how to fix that. Uh, then have a game of crib. <laughs> Being in an old people's home, yeah, I know. Yeah, and um, right. you've, you've had a lovely game of crib with Suzanne, because you know the magic's still there. And uh, what time do you hit the sack? Don't know about eleven. Do you go to bed at the same time? Yeah. So that's it. Yeah, that's so, the day. Really. Well, hang on, we haven't finished yet. So, any conversation before bed? Uh, depends if the radio is on. I might say, look, here's that story about the worm. Yeah. Mm. And then she'll go, yeah, but look, it hasn't got teeth. It said this, that and the other, and I'll go, oh, yeah, uh, uh, forgot. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> That's the end of that. Another really. day closer to death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's that's like one of his days. That's pretty much what he does day in and day out. That's That's weird. Weird. You know what I like in the beginning? He was like, oh, I'm a happy go lucky. <laughs> like, this is the same guy who said his parents told him that he could frown before he could walk. Constantly contradicting himself. Amazing. Uh, although I am kind of jealous of this. I mean, <laughs> clearly he has nothing to do because he's, he's done. <laughs> you know, he's made his money. So there's nothing left to do now but to just go to a podcast with Ricky and Steve and that's it. Wow. Okay. <laughs>